Hi, I'm Forrest Roadman. And I'm Thomas Rohrbach, and this is Fundamentals of Dynamics and Controls, Dropping Cats. In this video, we're going to be looking at the mechanisms which allows a cat to always land on its feet. Pictured here, we have Rice Roadman dropping Kuma from a height of one foot. In order to properly describe our dynamic system, we made some assumptions that simplified the overall process. First off, we assumed that the muscle memory of the cat was representative of the transfer function we found in our control law. Second off, we found that there were no external moments applied, therefore there was a zero net change in angular momentum. We also assumed that the ability of the cat to be able to right itself was independent of the height from which it was dropped, which it turns out is actually a true physical statement. We also assume that the initial and final angular velocities of the cat itself are zero. For simplicity, we established that our model only has one input. The initial angular distance from the upright position, represented by theta, will be the initial angle the cat is at. For example, if the cat starts on its back, upside down, the initial angle will be 180 degrees. Because we only had one input, we resulted with only two outputs. The angular distance traveled, represented by phi, will be the total angle the cat spins. Uh, and spin time will be the time it takes for the cat to complete its full rotation. Note, eventually a distinction will be made between two control laws, one being a macroscopic view of how the reflex is learned, and the current control law, how the actual writing reflex is executed. Here, we have a schematic better defining the angles previously mentioned for inputs and outputs. As you can see, the cat rotates with its own body frame with respect to the local horizon and local vertical defined by the ENU frame. While researching this project, we found a very complicated mass model made by students trying to create a robotic cat to simulate this maneuver. For sake of simplicity, we broke it down into four components, just two sections of body and two sections of legs. The body frame is defined with the x-axis coming out the front of the cat, the y-axis coming out of the port side of the cat, and the z-axis coming straight out of the top of the cat. Here we have the Simulink model defining the open loop control system of our cat. It's open loop because it's executed through muscle memory and therefore there is no feedback incorporated. Our system is only governed by two equations. The first being the sum of the torques and in this case it is zero because there is no external torque. The second being F equals MA where force is the force of gravity acting on the cat and acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. Because the sum of the torques is equal to zero, the cat manipulates the positioning of its body to adjust its moment of inertia about its principal axis of rotation. By extending its hind legs, arching its back, and pulling in its front feet, the cat is able to redistribute its mass and redistribute the resistance to rotating. The aft section of its body has a greater resistance, whereas the front section is allowed to apply an internal moment and begin the rotation necessary to right the cat's positioning. The cat alternates between steps of pulling in its front and its hind legs in order to create internally executed moments which can therefore rotate the entire mass system of both halves of the body. It is important to note that the initial and final angular momentum of the cat are the same and that the initial and final angular velocity of the cat are the same. There is no external torque applied so there is no change in either of the two states. Because we wanted to integrate feedback into this discussion, we looked at the riding reflex of the cat over its lifetime. Initially, as a kitten, the cat does not have a perfect riding reflex and lands on its back a lot. However, eventually, as an adult cat, the cat lands on its feet 100% of the time. Because of this, we hypothesize that there is some feedback initially to correct the muscle memory each time it is dropped. Each time it is dropped, it remembers the outcome of the previous drop and through some kind of internal controller, it changes the muscle memory transfer function it is using to rotate. Eventually, when the cat has gone through enough iterations of the dropping process, it has a perfect transfer function that can use every time to land on its feet. Thanks for listening to us talking about the uh, dynamics and controls of dropping cats. My name's Thomas. My name's Forrest, and stay classy, San Diego.